What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with an unboxing and first look at the Microsoft Surface Windows 8 tablet. Now the base configuration starts you off at $499, which gets you just the tablet with 32 gig capacity. Now the version I have here is the 32 gig version with a touch cover, which brings the price to $599. You can also get a 64 gig version with a touch cover for $699. Currently there is no cellular version, so these are Wi-Fi only. Now this version of the Surface is also sporting Windows 8 RT, a version of Windows 8 that runs on ARM processors instead of x86 processors from Intel or AMD. This means that the existing Windows apps will not run on this version of Windows until RT versions are released by the developers. Spec-wise, we have an NVIDIA Tegra 3 quad-core CPU with 2 gigs of RAM and a 10.6-inch clear-type HD display with a resolution of 1366 by 768 for a true 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So this is great in particular for watching movies. Now enough of the talking and let's get to the unboxing. We just need to peel off some tape to slide the box out of its sleeve. And since I have the bundled version with a touch cover, we can find that tucked under the big white box containing the Surface. Now the touch cover can be had in a variety of colors, but the bundled version includes a black cover only. And selecting your own color will add $20. Now the touch cover is a non-mechanical keyboard with a magnetic hinge. Essentially, it's a lot like Apple's smart cover, but with a built-in keyboard which connects directly to the surface so no Bluetooth pairing or charging is needed. The packaging is simple, containing some brief instructional literature, uh, while the keyboard is housed in a frame which you can pop off near the hinge. The cover itself is very low profile with keys embossed into the surface. You also have a trackpad with left and right click for traditional mousing functions, although you can use the touch screen in conjunction with the trackpad if you prefer, which is what I find myself doing. Now onto the big white box, we have another piece of tape to pull before we open up the lid. Incidentally, you can see the bright blue interior which picks up on the Windows 8 theme. Now the first thing we'll see is our surface wrapped in plastic and to the right we'll find our power supply with Windows 8 branding. Uh, we also have those folding prongs for traveling. We also get a magnetic connector for charging the surface. This is actually very similar to Apple's MagSafe connector on the MacBooks. There's also an LED charging indicator on the connector so you know when it's working. Also below the tablet is a literature packet glued to the box. Here you'll find the very basic info on how to use your tablet and what each port and button does. We just need to pull the tab to free the surface from the plastic envelope and we can start taking a look around. Now the body is all metal. It's made out of a material Microsoft calls Vapor Mag. So the surface of the material actually feels very smooth with less texturing than anodized aluminum bodies like you might find on the iPad. The design is fairly industrial with simple lines and an angled edge which houses all the buttons and ports. Now on the back we'll find the new Windows 8 logo etched into the metal kickstand. Looking at the right side we'll find one of the two speaker ports on the top, a micro HDMI connector and a USB 2.0 port. Farther down is a magnetic connector for the charging cable. On the bottom we'll find the connectors for accessories like the touch cover. And on the left side we'll find the only thumb port for opening the kickstand. Now behind the kickstand is some of the product information which is neatly hidden from view. We'll also find a micro SD expansion slot which is located near the power connector on the right side. Also on the left side is the second speaker grill, a headphone jack, and the volume rocker. At the top we'll find our sleep wake button as well as dual microphones. Now on the back we'll find our one megapixel rear facing camera which is capable of recording 720p video but is otherwise a fairly mediocre still camera with no autofocusing. On the front, we'll find another 720p camera, along with an LED indicator and ambient light sensor. Also on the bottom of the screen is a capacitive home button, which is unfortunately not backlit. Now, setting up your Microsoft Surface can take a few minutes, but the process is otherwise fairly simple. You just need to select a language, agree to the terms and conditions, and you can begin personalizing your experience, such as selecting the color of your interface. Now, I just need to sign into my wireless network. Once this is done, I can log into my Microsoft account or set up a new one, which will then transfer content such as bookmarks, address books, calendars, emails, and etc. Now, once you've named your tablet and set up a password, the Surface will begin displaying some tutorial information on how to use the gesturing on the new tablet while it continues to set up your tablet in the background, which can take a few minutes. Once that's done, your home screen will pop up and you're ready to start using your new Windows 8 tablet. Now, Windows 8 features this tiled user interface. Many of these tiles are active and always updating with information or images for at-a-glance viewing. Other tiles are just links to launch apps. 
Windows 8 comes loaded with some apps for mail, photos, calendars, maps, SkyDrive, games, music, movies, and the social hub for linking your Facebook, Twitter accounts. We also have the Microsoft App Store, which is where you can purchase new apps such as Netflix. You can also move these tiles around and reposition them as you want. And you can also pinch in and out to zoom your entire view. So for example, as you start adding more and more content, you're going to see a larger and larger view. The Surface also comes pre-installed with a preview edition of Microsoft Office 2013, which has yet to be optimized for Windows 8. So the app will actually launch into the traditional desktop viewer, which looks a lot like the traditional Windows interface. You can even access a desktop version of Internet Explorer in this view. Now to navigate get around Windows 8, you just need to familiarize yourself with some of the gestures. So swiping right from the screen brings up the charms bar, which features critical functions such as search, which allows you to search your tablet for apps or files, or search the web using Bing. We also have sharing options, which will vary depending on the file or app you're viewing. So for example, if I tap share while viewing a photo, I'll get a list of share options such as email or Microsoft's cloud storage service SkyDrive. The devices function is also contextual, so tapping this will reveal services or software which can use the file or app you're currently viewing. So for example, this is where I can find my printing options for printing documents or photos. Settings is where we can access controls for networking, volume, screen brightness, notifications management, and the power toggle for powering off or restarting the device. We also have our keyboard options. Here we can change the keyboard layout to fit our needs, such as a split keyboard for thumb typing. We also get a keyboard with handwriting recognition, which seems to work accurately, if not quickly. Now, swiping in from the left side will allow you to swipe between your active apps. You can also bring up a list of open apps so you can quickly jump to them. There's also a multitasking function which allows you to open two apps side by side, and from there you can move the divider to resize the window. Swiping from the bottom brings up a contextual menu, which varies depending on the app that's on screen. So for example, if I'm in IE, bringing up the menu brings up our open tabs. Now to close an app and to get us back to the home screen, all you have to do is swipe down from the top. Now the Surface tablet works in both landscape and portrait mode, even in the lock screen. Now when the device is locked, you can wake it up by tapping the home button or the sleep wake button. And from the lock screen, you just swipe up to unlock the device. As for the camera app, we can toggle between front and rear facing cameras. You can also have the option uh, to change your photo resolution and even audio input. Clicking more will let you change the brightness, contrast, and exposure settings. We also have a timer which gives you three seconds to snap a photo after you, after you tap the screen. Now to snap a photo, you simply touch the screen. Obviously there is no touch to focus on this tablet because there is no auto focusing. Now getting back to the touch cover, installation is very simple. Just bring the connectors near each other and the magnets will do the rest in a nice satisfying clicking sound. Once connected, your keyboard is ready to use. And now you can fold the keyboard back uh, so you can use the tablet as in the traditional tablet sense uh, without the keyboard. And when the keyboard is in that position, you can't accidentally press the keys. It knows when you don't intend to use it. Now when closed, the cover will put the surface to sleep. And when you open it up, it will wake it up again. The keyboard will also let you launch all of the items in the charms menu, such as search, sharing, devices, and settings. The keyboard itself works much better than I expected and certainly works better than using an on-screen keyboard. However, it still fails to register some key presses which can slow you down. A traditional mechanical keyboard is still the best and most reliable option and Microsoft does sell a version for the Microsoft Surface which might be worth looking at. Now in the end, I'm impressed by the Surface hardware and Windows 8 user interface, which I think is well suited for the touchscreen of a tablet interface. I'm not sure it's great on a desktop or a laptop. I especially like the live tiles, which gives you access to a lot of information at a glance. However, Windows 8 RT is only as good as the apps and ecosystem, and this is where Windows 8 has some catching up to do. However, I think Windows 8 is a refreshingly innovative experience with some distinct advantages that put it in a position to really challenge Apple and Google once developers and consumers get on board. So that's going to do it for me, guys, in this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one.